the one who achieves their dreams is the one who has the most intimate relationship with their future self. The one who achieves their dreams is the one who has the most intimate relationship with their future self. See, there's a piece of you right now for most of you. There's a piece of you that you look at, you create this master plan and you've got all this real estate holdings and you've got these first class vacations that cost fifty to hundred thousand dollars that you don't even realize how much it'll cost. Um, and your brain cannot really accept the fact that you can have that. Now there's not all of you, but some of you there, this is you write you draw this stuff out and you're like, I want this, I want this, I don't know how I just I don't see it, right? You so you've got to visualize it until you believe it. So you start seeing it, you start seeing it. But there is a piece of you right now that looks at the future self and says, that's impossible. This is why we talk about the impossible map, the impossible targets when we did our summit expedition at the beginning of the year. What? We've got our impossible, we've got a radical, and we've got a reasonable. The reasonable one, those are the ones you go look at and go like, okay, I can see that, I can do that. Radical would be like, maybe that would be awesome. I don't know how to do it, but it would be awesome. Impossible is like, okay. If I was somebody else, I could do this, right? If I had this, if I was this, and, but we can't really wrap our head around it. <coughs> the one who's the highest achiever is the one who can get to know that person that can do what your current version of you cannot accomplish. Does that make sense? The current version of me cannot envision having that. So when I was renting a bedroom, sleeping on an air mattress in an unfurnished old apartment complex, old apartment, I couldn't really see myself as the guy who had a, who had a 50 foot yacht. The person who could own a multi-million dollar house and own millions of dollars of real estate. I couldn't visualize that. I couldn't, I couldn't, when I couldn't visualize it, I couldn't believe it. <clears throat> so how did I get to where I could believe it? By just visualizing it and declaring it over and over and over again. And then getting around people who had the resources that were able to do that. And getting around people that had that. And then over time, you just start going like, okay, this feels more natural. This feels more normal. This is why I subscribe to the Rob Report. You guys know what the Rob Report is, right? The Rob Report is the toy, toy catalog for people that don't have to ask how much is it, right? I went, so last night I had a bunch of work I had to get done. So I got a bunch of work done and then I'm like, I need to stop talking. I just like let my voice rest and I got work to do. So I'm going to go to a cigar lounge and have a cigar. I was going to invite you, but I couldn't talk. I was like, I'd love to do it, but I'm like, I can't talk. I just got to not talk. And if we were hanging out, we'd be talking nonstop. So I'm like, my vocal cords are still like, I'm feeling like they're out of shape. And I was just like, I got to not talk. So I went to the cigar shop and I'm like, okay, I want a Davidoff. He's like, we don't have Davidoff, bro. And I'm like, well, then what do you got this close? He's well, um, you like cu Cubans? I'm like, you have Cuban? So I had a nice Cuban cigar last night that was like, Mwah. like insane. And it's like, I looked at, he's, he pulls out this drawer, and so his, his dad actually gets, goes back and forth from Cuba. I don't know if they have to smuggle, I don't know if it's legal or not, but. <laughs> I don't know, I, didn't ask, I don't ask questions. I'm like, yep, those are real Cubans, so. Because um, I also got a guy in El Segundo that they imported from Italy, which is legal. They can, you can import Cubans, take imported to Italy, and then from Italy they can import them here. So that's done, but it's kind of like, they only have it for VIP members. So if anybody ever wants Cuban, just let me know and I'll get you, I'll hook you up with Marco. Um, but I'm like, I want it. I'm like, that's what I want. So I, I'm like, which one's the best one? He goes like, that one right there. Okay, perfect. And I'm like, I didn't ask how much it costs because I wanted to. I wanted to go like, so 
How much is it? It was, it was not cheap. Let's just say it was not cheap. It was more than most of you have spent on a nice meal. But it was not like the most expensive cigar I've ever bought. But I just like, I don't care. It's what I want. And so visualize yourself getting to a point where you do what you want to do, not what you can afford to do. Right? So we got to get this intimate relationship with that. Two other pieces to this. Number one, some of you are operating and have been operating in scarcity. The problem with scarcity is it's like a drowning man. So when somebody is drowning, do they dream of a 50-foot yacht? No. They just want to stop drowning. So they're like, just get me out of the fucking water. Let me not drown. I, and I'll be a canoe's perfect. Just get me the fuck out of the water. And then we get it. And the, so that's all they care about. They just care about not drowning. So when somebody is under distress or in a survival situation, all they think about is not dying. So they're just thinking about get me out of the immediate pain I'm in and I'm good. I'm just, I just want to not be dying. And it's very difficult from that place to dream. Does that make sense to everybody? Very difficult from that place to dream. So you've got to mentally understand you're not dying. None of you are dying. None of you are drowning. I get it, you're financially distressed. Some of you, you're in scarcity, but you've got to keep your head in abundance, not in scarcity. Because from abundance, you get from a mindset of abundance, now I have power, I have confidence, I have certainty. <coughs> and I can visualize and believe and declare what I want and that's what's going to be attracted into my life. If all I'm thinking about is a survival, what's going to be attracted into my life? Survival. survival. You're going to survive. Like it's, it's going to be okay. Okay. None of you are literally at risk of dying of starvation or exposure. There's not anybody here that is in that situation. So this is where getting my head right, getting your head out of that shit. Tom Brady, this was several years ago when he was still with New England Patriots. And there was a time when one of the offensive linemen was kind of pissed off because he felt like he was not getting the accolades or the recognition he deserved. And Tom Brady came into the, to the uh, training facility and he heard him just bitching about that like he didn't get the fair coverage in the reporting. And he walked right over, put him right up in his face, and he said, get your head right. We're here to win rings. Who gives a fuck about accolades? We're here to win championships. That's why we're here. This, was, this is why Tom Brady became the, has become the greatest of all time. It's because there was this relentless focus on one fucking thing. And it didn't matter how far behind they were in the game. You guys learned that from him, right? Didn't matter. One thing. We're going to win. Because winning is everything. Championship. 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 That's, that, this is where you've got to be. Get your head right. We're here to build empires. You are here to have the lifestyle of your dreams. You are not here to pay your fucking bills. Does that make sense? Why are you in real estate if you just want to pay bills? It's too, it's too fucking stressful to own your own business. Go work for somebody else. Get a solid paycheck. It's good. And you, then you can take weekends off. Take, when you clock out, you actually clock out and don't have to worry about shit. Why do you worry? Why don't you stress yourself out 20 hours a day about real estate and the business and deals and clients and all that kind of stuff? If you're thinking survival, go get a regular job, get a paycheck, get the benefits, you're good. The only reason to be in real estate is to build a fucking empire. Does that make sense to everybody? Why else would you be here? It's too hard. Okay, people are like, oh, I just want to be, I want to be a coach like you. I get it. You want to, but you want to build shit like me? You, you, are you willing to spend 10 months, eight months, not 10, it's going to grow over years. Eight months sleeping on an air mattress in an unfurnished bedroom while you build shit because you can't pay bills? You ready for that? You got to be willing to go there. You got to be willing to be super uncomfortable. Are you willing to do that? Are you willing to shoot videos when you don't feel like shooting videos? Are you willing to have your heart broken? If you're not willing to have your heart broken, don't go here. Right? If you're building empires is heavy shit. When you, when you presume to wear a crown, the crown, the weight of the responsibility of the crown is enormous. 
So if you want it, you got to go get it, but you got to keep your head right. Or you cannot have the mindset of a peasant and build an empire. And a peasant is only worried about one thing, staying alive, paying the bills, being comfortable, staying out of trouble, staying out of distress. Just take care of me. Okay? Empire builders, totally different mindset. You got to get your head right. Okay? So, number one, intimate relationship with your future self. Who you want to be and who, who would I have to be to be able to own that house? Who would I have to be to be able to drive that car, to be able to go on vacations like that? Who would I have to be and have an intimate relate, get an inter, create an intimate relationship with that future self? Number two, get your head right out of scarcity into abundance as your daily way of thinking. This is why stacking is so important, your daily declarations, your visualization or reviewing your goals. Every day, this is why this becomes so important. This is what I have to do every day to keep my head right. Stacking is what I have to do every day to keep my head right. Okay, and then number three, <coughs> visualize it and declare it as a present reality. Okay, so some of you, so my master plan, this is, this is in a sense my master plan. Okay. I call it my pocket plan. I tried to call it, I, I, one time I changed it and called it, started calling it my map, my, I don't remember, I called, started calling it my something map, pocket map or something. But anyway, um, I just call it my pocket plan. So it has images that allow me to visualize. Then it has declarations that allow me to send messages to my subconscious brain about what, who I am and what I'm becoming. 